how Bitcoin SV can serve the same function as a trust. So for those who uh, are familiar with trusts, you think about it, you've got a beneficiary, you've got a, a t as the f beneficiary of the trust, you've got a trustee who's serving the function of managing the trust, and then you have a grantor, settlor, trustor who's setting up the trust. Now normally that's gonna take a law firm, legal documents to present, and that you will have, let's say, your house or, or property that you wanna give away to your, your children at a certain a age once they become 18 and in case you pass away, or uh, you know, even while you're alive, it's a living trust. But let's talk about exactly the function of how Bitcoin SV can do that, all right? This is a really incredible use case scenario. First of all, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, so, you know, share the, the video with other people. I'm gonna show you tremendous value, it's something that nobody's talked about yet on the use case of Bitcoin, and specifically Bitcoin SV. Because we're talking about Bitcoin, you know, we're talking about what's going into court right now in, in London for the use case of the name, which is the original blockchain called Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, the 2009 version of Bitcoin. So how this actually will work. First of all, shout out to Xiao Wei Lu of Script and also David Mia. I'm going to put those guys on the front page of this video for a picture. We're going to go to dinner over there in Silicon Valley right now. David Mia from the Bitcoin Association, and he is uh, uh, from Tokyo. And Xiao Wei Lu is originally from uh, China, and now he's living also in Silicon Valley, you know, running an S-Crypt, you know, some, two of the big brains in the Bitcoin movement right now. So, but listen to this. So, uh, as you talk about, when you first, if you're gonna, if I were to be setting up a trust, okay, I would, I would have to create these legal documents and then put these legal documents inside of a, of a hire a trustee or a form of trustees, kind of like how, Satoshi did with the original with the original trust with all the bitcoins you know, that came out of the Kleiman case, the Kleiman v. Wright case. They called it the Tulip Trust. So let's use that as an example. If he were to setting up the Tulip Trust, he he takes all these bitcoins, a million bitcoins, and he puts them into trust for these for these trustees to hold for twenty for ten years. And then after ten years, they would release them to the beneficiary, being let's say Satoshi. I don't know who the beneficiary was. But let's just use the name Satoshi for, this, for the sake of this video. So that was done through a legal process and that was then released in 2020 or 2020, yeah, 2020. But in this case, nowadays, the function of Bitcoin itself can, can serve the same purpose without the middleman, without the risk of, of getting an attorney. Uh, there's a lot of risk in setting up a regular trust. I mean, Think about it. Let's say you have a piece of property and you want to put it into trust for the sake that if something were to happen to you, you want to be able to have a trustee sell it and give it to your beneficiaries without the hassle of probate, going through a will process and spending a lot of money on the extra attorneys. Okay, well, you've got to trust the trustee or backup trustees because, hey, crime pays. Sometimes you can't, you, you know, trust people. They, they, they backstab you in the back no matter how much you thought you could trust them. I mean, so there's a huge risk in, in setting up a regular trust. Yeah, they have a legal obligation, but sometimes it doesn't matter. A guy can just walk into a, a bank and, and, and rob it. It's not supposed to happen. It's against the law, but it happens every all the time. So there's huge risk in just setting up trust in general. Uh, to, to serve this purpose. So imagine this. Imagine that same piece of uh, property, let's say it's worth $100,000 in real estate, as opposed to it being set up in trust with a law firm and legal documents, what if it could be set up on chain, on Bitcoin, with a smart contract that allowed you, that allowed the trustor or grantor to lock the Bitcoin I mean, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, Bitcoin in trust on the blockchain for a certain period of time, days, months, years, 10 years, 20 years, however long it wanted to, and then release those Bitcoin to a certain specific wallet address at a specific period of time. Well, that's exactly what's happening right now. There's a, there's a, uh, there's a platform that Jack Lou had set up. Well, he was, I think, the mastermind behind it called Hodlocker. Hodlocker.com. 
and that's exactly what it is. What they're we're passing across the Dunbarton Bridge, right over the freaking you know beautiful water here, just across. Maybe you'll see it in the background, but you know into Palo Alto. Now listen to this. So what it does on Hoglocker is it allows the parties to lock up their Bitcoin for whatever period of time they choose. Now, the, the parties aren't giving the Bitcoin to Hodlocker. It's not a it's not a custody service. It's not an exchange. It's just a, it, what it appears to be is a smart contract system. It appears to be. And I'll have to find out from the creator and basically the architect of all the smart contracts on Bitcoin tonight, shall we, shall we Lou, if that's what it is or not. But it's, it's a way to allow these uh, settler, grantors and settlers to lock up their Bitcoin and then provide them to a certain address at a certain amount of time. It also, it also gives like ways, so like, let's say that when a person, when a grantor locks up the Bitcoin for a certain amount of time, he has, uh, he has a lot of clout. You know, there's a lot of uh, things that go to his ego too, because they say, oh look, John Doe just locked up a thousand Bitcoin here. Whatever, the, I think it's only a, a certain limit, maybe a hundred Bitcoin right now at a time is the limit. But let's say he locks up a hundred Bitcoin, then what he says, he could write a comment and he could write a message so that his heirs and everybody else on the chain will see it. And then it'll be, in, it's embedded in there throughout time, forever. It doesn't go away. He writes a message to the world when he writes up, when he locks those Bitcoin. So whatever he wants to say, his legacy, it's kind of like a, his tombstone in a way. This is what's going to be on his tombstone. It's, just, it's on the blockchain. And they're locked up permanently. Per, not permanently, whatever amount of time that he wants. So this is a, a true, like, real world use case that nobody has talked about yet. Because they're talking about it on the hard locker for this way of doing it where, like I'm talking about, you you get to put them in there, you lock them up for yourself, and, and you, you get this clout on the network. But I'm seeing it as a whole other level. I'm seeing it as a as an alternative to the risk of having legal trusts. Alright? I want to set up a trust. I gotta hire a law firm. I gotta trust the law firm. I gotta trust the trustee or multiple trustees. They don't screw me over. Okay? I write up the trust, I have my beneficiaries. I hope that one day those trustees will actually follow through with the orders that I give them when I die or when I'm not available to function to serve my as my role over the over the property and I hope they do it there's no guarantee but I, I trust that they will trust Bitcoin this system on with Hotlocker it allows for what's what Ascript and Shaoi Lubick would call is trustless trustless there's no need to trust anyone anymore because the contract itself is, is derived to automatically perform the function of sending the Bitcoin to that wallet address in that amount of time. So for me, if I want to send Bitcoin to, a, to an error in 10 years from now, when my nephew turns 18 years old, he's 8 years old, I can lock him up. Even if it's one Bitcoin, right? Think about it, just one. One Bitcoin SV, the amount, the value that it will be in 10 years, if I put it in trust for him in his name, he only has access to the private keys. I put him in a safety deposit box so he can access that at a certain time. And those keys only work on his 18th birthday, for example. When he turns 18, he can down, he can take that Bitcoin out of a wall, out of a wallet, and he can go sell it. It's his. It's like a, a way to create a beautiful gift him 10 years from now because he never had the knowledge or the know-how or the you know the wherewithal to buy a, a bitcoin when he was eight years old but when he turned 18 he will have one and that is an incredible process right there that's a really a beautiful use case scenario for someone like me to be able to use this because you know henry i made videos about him before henry's eight years old now i mean think about it he didn't know anything about bitcoin but he didn't care to know what it is but, I, but when he turns 18 you'll know and that one Bitcoin is worth an unmeasurable amount of dollar 10 years from now. Think about that. Anyways, this is Gavin Mail. It's getting dark. Coming into Silicon Valley. Shout out to, like I said, David Mia, Xiaowei Lu, S-Crypt. Find those guys on Twitter. 
and uh, you'll see them on the cover of the video here and the you know I'll put them in the uh, the image on the front okay so S uh, Shawi Lu is under Twitter uh, Sino Trinity Sino Trinity and the company's S Crypt they're the ones that created the smart contracts on Bitcoin the language solidity is now completely built onto Bitcoin it's amazing and this is an incredible use case scenario this use case alone of trust on Bitcoin is enough for me I don't need all the other stuff that's enough value for me because of that one Bitcoin that I can give to Henry when he turns 18 in trust that's just a beautiful it's just a beautiful process it's a beautiful uh, measure of, uh, of 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 using the system properly you know, exactly the way I, I would see it. I want to use the system and not having to do any other complicated legal process and hire anybody else, trust anybody else. Like, comment, subscribe. This is Gavin Mail. See you on the other side. Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. That's the name. And screw the name BSV. I hate that name. That's going to go away after, after the uh, Satoshi team wins the court case against COPA. By the way, there's a, a post just the other day with 32 companies involved against one man Satoshi 32 companies making up Copa these are big giant companies why are these 32 companies all trying to sue one one poor guy come on Sato what's the big deal what 32 companies ganging up on him and it looks like it's more likely than not let's say more than 50 percent in my humble opinion I'm not in a in my humble opinion that's what it is that Satoshi will win. More than a 50% chance. And I'll tell you right now, it reflects in the price. What happened over the last freaking week? Bitcoin Satoshi Vision's up, what, 50% in price? I mean, people are starting to, starting to find out about it. It's very limited supply. And I think it's very hard to get. I almost don't want to talk about it too much because I need to buy more. And I don't want it to go up too fast.